Okay. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us here in the Zoom room or on the YouTube channel after. Uh, really glad to share practice with you and Dharma. Uh, tonight, a couple inspirations came. There was a question on a, mm, a, a, a chat group with other Dharma teachers, uh, somebody looking for some suttas regarding lay people or people that are not monastics and um, the ways we we support each other as community and looking for some guidelines and stuff so that kind of got me looking into suttas uh, or suttas meaning teachings that are recorded um, written down teachings from the buddha's time and uh, so that's how i found this teaching that i'm going to share tonight and at the similarly as things happen with synchronicities uh, often uh, a poem that I'm, I'll also be sharing. I'll put the links for these down below in the YouTube recording. Um, that also speaks about friendship and love and interconnectedness. That um, I was listening to a a video or a vlog. Um, it, uh, conversation about this poem and so uh, these things happened this week that that brought us to this topic which is four kinds of good friends uh, and it was a new sutta for me that I hadn't found before and I'm I really love it it's from the Diginakaya 31 and this is an excerpt from that sutta, it's just part of that sutta. And I've it, it's found in, in this beautiful book, The Buddhist Teachings on Social and Communal Harmony, uh, compiled by Bhikkhu Bodhi. And it's a it's a beautiful little little gem that uh, covers a lot of important topics regarding our relationships and harmony and conflicts and how to be skillful with both of those. So, start with poem or sutta. I'm gonna start with the sutta. <clears throat> so, this is a, a conversation that the Buddha was reportedly having speaking to a young man in this case named Sigalaka. And uh, he's telling him there, there's, it's a quite a long sutta around how to be skillful as a non-monastic or as a lay person. And this part in particular is around good friendships or skillful friendships, um, Onward leading friendships is another way to say these things. So he's, he's speaking to him and says, young man, there are these four kinds of kind hearted friends. So not just uh, not not just these four kinds of friends, but these four kinds of kind hearted friends. So one is the friend who is helpful. And I'll go into each of these more, but just naming them first. The first one is the friend who is helpful. The second is the friend who shares one's happiness and suffering. The third is a friend who points out what is good. And the fourth is a friend who is sympathetic. Yeah. That word sympathetic reminds me of uh, mudita, which is sometimes translated as sympathetic joy. And we think of it like sympathy, but it uh, really means resonant, like a symphony, like not sympathy as in pity, but more like sympathetic as in in harmony with, in resonance with, um, is, might be a, a helpful way to think of that. So let's break these down a little more, not 
let's, but let's see what the Buddha taught about each of these. So this is uh, uh, more information about the first one, the helpful friend. So the first one is a friend who is helpful, and this is how that's defined. A friend who is helpful protects you when you are heedless. So what does heedless mean? <laughs> Basically, the opposite of mindful, right? If we're mindful or attentive, awake, aware, being heedful, being mm, full of intention to not cause harm, that would be heedful. And so being heedless is being unskillful, unmindful, mm, uncompassionate, is that a word? <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. Um, okay, so this, a good friend, a helpful friend, protects you when you are being heedless. This is so good. <laughs> I feel like I need a little army of friends around me all the time. And we do. For when I'm being heedless, which happens? Times of being unskillful, unmindful, speaking too quickly, too harshly, being greedy, deluded, whatever, all the ways it shows up. So they protect you. That's interesting to reflect on. How do we protect each other? Hmm. There's a lot we could say about that. The second aspect of a helpful friend. The first is that they protect you when you're heedless. Then they also look after your property when you're heedless. So not only do they protect you, but they help to make sure you're not damaging things or, uh, you know, losing your home or whatever it is. They, they help look after your property. You could see this like in in our precepts around um, undertake the training to not cause harm from intoxicants. You can see when we're intoxicated, we become heedless and all kinds of damage can happen to ourselves, to property, to others. And so this is when we have our friends to hopefully not not be in that situation in the first place, but if that's happening, to take care of us. Uh, they are, are a refuge when you are frightened is another aspect of a helpful friend. Isn't that beautiful? A refuge, like a refuge is such a beautiful word. Safe harbor when you're frightened, a refuge. Uh, yeah, that's very beautiful. And when some need arises, they give you twice the wealth required. This is a, the last aspect of the helpful friend, generosity, compassion, um, renunciation. Gosh, there's so much in this little sutta. It's only four paragraphs, but just that one on the helpful friend is so full for each of us to reflect on. Am I being a helpful friend? Are these helpful people uh, supporting in uh, me as well as uh, am I offering that to other protection, um, refuge when you're frightened, and generosity? Okay, so the second uh, characteristic of a kind-hearted friend, the first was they're helpful. This second grouping now is a friend who shares one's happiness and suffering. I already love that so much <laughs> without even going into it. You know, it could easily have just been, they share your happiness, but they also share your suffering. What else needs to be said? That's just very beautiful. And so a little more about this characteristic. 
um, they reveal uh, their secrets to you and guard your own secrets. This is interesting. I wish I had time to find the Pali version of this and look up what word is. Pali is the language the teachings of the Buddha were written down in. And to, I would be very curious about this word secret. So I'd like to look it up in Pali and check the Pali English Dictionary to know a little more about that translation. Um, I think of it as confidences, you know, they, they share their confidences with you and you feel safe enough to share yours with them. I think for me, the word secrets is a little bit loaded. So that's what, where that's coming from. Um, in addition, uh, this one who is sharing your happiness and your suffering does not abandon you when you're in trouble. Seems obvious. However, some of us may have experienced otherwise. Does not abandon you when you are in trouble. That's what the, the opposite of that would be what's called a fair weather friend, only there when things are good. And lastly, would even sacrifice their life for your sake. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Wow. Um, wow. That's big. Okay, so the third category of a kind-hearted friend, the first grouping is a helpful friend. The second one is one who shares, um, you share happiness and suffering. And the third group is a friend who points out what is good. So let's find out more about what that is. So they restrain you from evil. So again, translation here, evil pretty heavy word uh it it means unskillfulness harm uh greed hatred and delusion um all the ways that we cause suffering to ourselves and others and to the the earth the world itself um they also the translation here says enjoins you in good so enjoin means to instruct or urge someone to encourage someone to do um they encourage us in in good or wholesome again these words good and evil you could say wholesome and unwholesome skillful and unskillful um onward leading or what's the opposite of that dukkha <laughs> suffering uh, they inform you of what you have not heard and point out to you the path to, it says here, heaven, as we, again, I, I wish I had time to find the Pali and see what uh, word is there. Um, I, I, imagine that would be nibbana the the ending of suffering nibbana which is in sanskrit translated into sanskrit is nirvana so heaven is not a word that is usually seen in the suttas there's heavenly realms in the um buddhist cosmology um, but they don't usually talk about heaven it's usually nibbana nirvana the ending of suffering so a, the, a friend who points out what is good is restraining us from causing harm and encouraging us, instructing us, urging us towards what is good, skillful, wholesome. They inform us of what we haven't heard. That doesn't mean gossip. <laughs> it means informing us of um, the Dharma that we haven't heard 
and points us towards the ending of suffering. All right, and the last of these four groupings of kind-hearted friends is um, the sympathetic friend. This one does not rejoice in your misfortune. Seems pretty basic. <laughs> um, yeah, sympathetic. Does not rejoice in your misfortune and does rejoice in your good fortune. This is that quality of mudita, resonant joy. The good fortune of others, we, we say, may that continue, may that grow for you. May you have even more good fortune. Um, that, that sense of natural joy that we feel mm, that resonance with others when something great or good happens for them. Uh, they also um, stop those who speak dispraise of you. So somebody's speaking badly about you, gossiping, putting you down, um, speaking harshly about you, they stop them. Uh, I remember Maya Angelou, was it Maya Angelou? Um, I think it was. Wish I could find that clip right now, but uh, I remember, I think it was her speaking about mm, just saying stop to people that are talking trash. And, and, and she, she, uh, she just would say, stop, stop it, stop. Just really clear, just stop. And, uh, and it works. I've done it. It works. They just don't expect someone to just say, stop. It's not a conversation. It's not a debate. Just stop. So, um, they stop those who speak disparate dispraise of you, talking trash, um, and they commend those who speak praise of you. So encouraging kind speech, not harmful speech. Wow. So we got to up our friend game. I got to up my friend game. <laughs> this is pretty amazing. And it's so clear. It's so concrete and clear is not uh, just concepts they're really these are actionable items you know what I mean they're really uh, we could really track track this for ourselves and others um I I it's one I'm gonna be reading and studying a bit more. There's a lot in here. Um, so I'd like to um, include this in our practice tonight. And when we do the companion practice to Vipassana, Shamatha Vipassana, insight practice, uh, Metta, loving kindness, friendliness, benevolence, is a companion practice, a supporting practice. They they uh, support each other. These two practices, and one of the groupings of people that we practice metta with is called the friendly, friendly beings. There's also our benefactors or teachers, guides, mentors. There's a friendly, unfriendly, neutral, and then all beings. And so uh, tonight we'll uh, really practice and focus on metta, loving kindness, 
with the friendly beings in our lives. <clears throat> and uh, also down below uh, in the recording, you'll find a link to this poem, which I'd like to share, which I, I this poem, I could do a whole Dharma talk on this poem. It's, it's so good. It's called Safety Net, which already says all the things. <laughs> Safety Net is like this, this sutta, the four kinds of good friends is a safety net, right? It's a, that's where that sense of refuge is like, ah, oh, safe to fully be with good friends. There's that sense of safety. So this poem is called Safety Net. It's from Rosemary Watola Tromer. Uh, again, check the links down below to um, support her by purchasing her any of her excellent books. This is a new book um, called All the Honey that's just come out recently. That's uh, just all kinds of perfection. <clears throat> this poem is really about loving kindness to me. Um, and also spaciousness, interconnectedness, um, and uh, yeah, anatta, interconnectedness. So I'll just read the poem and then I'll probably read it again during the meditation. Safety Net by Rosemary Witola Tromer. It's so good. This morning I woke thinking of all the people I love and all the people they love. And how big the net of lovers. It felt so clear. All those invisible ties, interwoven like silken threads, strong enough to make a mesh that for thousands of years has been woven and rewoven to catch us all. Sometimes we go on as if we forget about it, believing only in the fall. But the net is just as real. Every day, with every small kindness, with every generous act, we strengthen it. Notice, even now, how as the whole world seems to be falling. The net is there for us as we walk the day's tightrope. Notice how every tie matters. There's just so much goodness in this poem. That sense of interconnectedness, the thousands of years, this ancestry of kindness, the ancestry, uh, our personal ancestries, you know, we can reflect on the kind beings that maybe we know or haven't known but also the ancestry of the Dharma, all the Dharmas in the world and of kindness. And then this reference to the present, that every day with every small kindness, with every gener generous act, we strengthen this safety net, which again refers back to the sutta. So for us, this invitation to pay attention to all the ways that the net is made. We're part of the net. Are we cutting holes in the net or are we tying little knots in the threads and creating the net together every day in every small act? Hmm. And, and just the speaking, the truth telling of how the whole world seems to be falling. And as we walk the day's tightrope, you know, this, I, I often mm, think of equanimity, which is one of the highest 
aspirations of our practice. Um, I think of equanimity as walking a tightrope. And, and this just really mm, adds so much to that image for me, that not just the image, but the, that expression of the safety net underneath the tightrope is, is all of this goodness, friendliness, skillfulness, wise intention, wise actions, generosity, et cetera. Beautiful. All right. Mm. There's a lot in, in this. This, this could be a weekend retreat, these two teachings. There's just a lot in here. Um, yeah. So let's practice. Let's practice enough talk. So as uh, we are practicing, as I said, uh, loving kindness or metta, um, metta bhavana, the cultivation of kindness and friendliness and benevolence, skillfulness, <clears throat> it's important that you set up your posture in a kind way. So what do you need right now? Check it out. Do you want to dim your lights? Do you want to turn toward a window? Do you want to lay down? Do you need any other supports or cushions? Take a moment, please, to be start with kindness to yourself. It will help you cultivate kindness to others if you do that. I'm going to have some water. <laughs> so taking time to make sure you're supported and comfortable. There's four postures for meditation. You don't have to sit cross-legged. You could stand, walk, sit, or recline. And take some time to uh, meet your nervous system. Do you need to look around your space? Is it helpful to move or stretch a little bit? Sometimes touch is helpful to hold your face or your heart or your belly. So that you're not just forcing yourself into a meditative posture in a mm, reactive way, but really uh, meeting your whole self. And then seeing in the invitation to rest. Feeling that direct experience of ah it feels not forced but good and kind to become still and wakeful undistracted and present See if you need any sighing breaths. So that as your nervous system begins to meet the present moment with kindness, with the kindness that you are showing yourself, then tension, any extra tension in the face might release or soften, widen.
The shoulders might slide down, feeling the weight of the bones resting down away from earlobes, not pulled down, just lengthening and resting. Inviting some softness into the areas of the heart center and the belly center. See if you can feel into the inner layers of the belly. And invite some softening there. Just when we're in a place of trigger or fight or flight, this inner belly gets tight and activates our nervous system. So that as the shoulders and the belly soften and rest, we might feel now more weight through the hips, the pelvis, legs. And noticing the connection to the ground, the relationship with ground, ground rising up to hold us and meet us in this present moment. Taking refuge in this present moment, resting here. befriending ourselves. And so we'll begin this loving kindness, cultivation, this friendliness practice with ourselves. As we have been arriving, meeting ourselves with kindness to whatever degree is possible. Being a helpful friend to ourselves meeting ourselves in our happiness and our suffering, cultivating what is good, and being kind, sympathetic, compassionate with ourselves. And so you could repeat these intentions in your own heart-mind silently cultivating this skillful wish of friendliness with yourself. May I be happy. May I be safe and free from harm. May I be well. And may I be peaceful. And even if your mind comes in to put parameters on those or question those, just touch into the wish, the deep heart intention, this seed that we want to cultivate and grow. May I be happy.
May I be safe. May I be well. May I be peaceful. And so for these next few moments of silence, you could repeat those phrases or use your own words or just rest in that intention, that feeling in relationship with yourself. And then releasing that part of the practice, feel the body, present moment, grounded. And then open heart and mind to Think of someone, some being in your life. It can be an animal companion. It could be, a, it could even be a place. It could be a family member, a friend, but someone who feels like a friendly being. Someone who is working towards these kind of intentions that we spoke about in this teaching, even though they may be unskillful at times or not uh, haven't haven't perfected all these qualities there's a sense of them being mm, a dear person a safe person a friendly kind compassionate generous person in your life or being Try not to think about it too much or mm, put too much judgment on it. Just trust what being comes to mind when you think of friendly, if this friendly category. It may even be someone you haven't seen in, in time. And Still connecting with your deepest heart's intentions and in heart and mind, picturing or feeling a sense of connection with this friendly person, friendly being, repeating these phrases silently in your own heart mind, may you be happy. May you be well. May you be safe. May you be peaceful. May you be happy. May you be well. May you be safe. May you be peaceful. And then you can continue repeating these phrases or using your own words or just resting in that felt experience of cultivating these 
friendly wishes with the friendly beings. If the mind has slipped off into distraction or sleepiness or stories, just gently with kindness, come back to the phrases. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. May you be peaceful. And understanding that this friendly being that you're practicing with is standing in for all of those who are friendly beings in your life. So that you're not struggling over who to choose. And then gently closing this part of the practice in your mind's eye, you could bow to that friendly being or close that connection with them in whatever way is fitting for you. Feel again your body, the ground, this present moment. And then for these last few minutes of the practice, just dropping, dropping back, widening, resting into this safety net. Let your shoulders drop down. The spine rest back. The heart soften forward. Safety Net by Rosemary Wachola Tromer. This morning, I woke thinking of all the people I love. and all the people they love. And how big the net of lovers. It felt so clear. All those invisible ties interwoven like silken threads, 
strong enough to make a mesh that for thousands of years has been woven and rewoven to catch us all. Sometimes we go on as if we forget about it, believing only in the fall. But the net is just as real. Every day, with every small kindness, With every generous act, we strengthen it. Notice even now. How as the whole world seems to be falling, the net is there for us as we walk the day's tightrope. Notice how every tie matters. For these next few minutes of silence together, see if you can just rest into that net. Thank you for joining us in this 
practice and reflection and I wish for you to be surrounded by good friends and people with skillful intentions but uh, most of all this is a call for us to be good friends <laughs> for others um, yeah so check the links down below to that beautiful poem and book and uh, the sutta reference and thanks for joining us in this practice